Welcome to this series of tutorial videos. My name is Guillaume Fournier. I'm a researcher at the Technical University of Munich. And I will be giving you an introduction to the MATLAB Toolbox TX that we developed here at the TFD group to build and solve for acoustic network models. Uh, in particular, the topic of this first video is to give a bit of background on state space modeling of thermoacoustic systems. Without going into all the details, here is a short introduction on thermoacoustic instabilities. We have a flame and a fluctuating flame is a monopole source of sound. So we have an F and G wave traveling in the downstream and upstream direction respectively. Now to extract some energy from that flame, it is placed in a confined environment like a combustion chamber. And this environment will interact with the flame, creating a feedback loop. So we have the waves that are partially transmitted and reflected at the boundaries and the reflected wave come back to the flame, thus creating a feedback loop. And it is known that if the pressure oscillations and the heat release rate oscillations are in phase, acoustic energy is created. And if this acoustic source is greater than the losses in the system, then self-excited instabilities can occur. And to investigate these instabilities, uh, various tools are available. We first have the high fidelity numerical simulations like LES and DNS. Uh, in the first picture, we have an example of a 360 LES of an industrial configuration. And the second one is a, a double sector LES. Um, they provide very accurate results, but are generally expensive and requires the use of supercomputers. Then we have LRF, which stands for Linearized Reactive Flow, and it is the uh, based on the linearized compressible Navier-Stokes and reacting species transport equations. Then if we um, do some more modeling assumptions, we can solve for the linearized Navier-Stokes and linearized Euler equations. Then if we neglect any mean flow effect and solve only for the acoustics, we obtain the Helmholtz equations. And finally, with the, more, with the most assumptions, but also the least expensive method, we have uh, network models. And this will be the, uh, the focus uh, of this series of videos. The idea behind network models is that complex system can be modeled with simple interconnected 1D elements. We have here, for example, the BRS burner that was experimentally investigated by Komarek. So we have a plenum, a swirler that can be mounted in, mounted in rear or front position, a combustion chamber. And this, uh, this whole system can be modeled uh, with the following network. So we have boundaries at the inlet and outlet. We have ducts where we uh, consider that the, um, the acoustics is the most important phenomenon in this uh, problem. And uh, the, the plenum and the combustion chamber are simply modeled as, duct, as uh, ducts where only 1D plane waves propagate. Then we have also compact elements like the area changes and uh, the flame, for example. Now the problem when we when it comes to acoustic problems is that usually we have to solve for a nonlinear eigenvalue problem. Here we have a minimal example with a simple duct of length L that is closed at the inlet and open at the outlet. Uh, we neglect any mean flow, so we have r equals 1 at the inlet, r equals minus 1 at the outlet. And um, if we look at the f and g waves propagating in this system, uh, from the inlet to the outlet, they are related as follows. Uh, with tau, uh, which is L over c, the propagation time it takes for the wave to, to travel in the duct and S is the complex frequency with growth rate and, and uh, angular, uh, angular frequency. Um, so we have this exponential term that uh, relate the phase change when traveling along the duct. 
Then if we um, also write the equations for the boundary conditions, we have at the inlet uh, uh, the reflection coefficient, uh, which is equal to 1, which gives one relation uh, relating fi and gi. And we can do the same for the outlet, also obtaining an equation relating G, uh, GO and FO. And if we rewrite all these equations, we can obtain the system's matrix, uh, which writes as follows. Now we have a, uh, we have a system with four equations with, with four unknowns, and this admits non-trivial solutions if the the determinant of this matrix is is null uh, which leads to the dispersion relation so in this simple problem it can be solved by hand we have this uh, dispersion relation and if we look for the fundamental mode for example we retrieve the classical results that we will have a quarter wave mode so in this uh, very simple example we could solve it by hand uh, in general it's uh, not the case and in particular, I want to highlight the fact that in the matrix we have these exponential terms and, and a dependence, an explicit dependence in frequency s, which makes this problem nonlinear. So if, if we write the acoustic wave equation in, in our duct, we have this PDE. However, if we adopt a different point of view and look at the characteristic wave amplitudes f and g, um, they are um, described with an advection equation. Uh, we have df over dt is equal minus c df over dx, and a similar um, e equation for g. The change of sign is due to the fact that one is uh, traveling in the downstream direction and the other is traveling in the upstream direction. Now, in tx, what has been done is that we transform this PDE using finite difference um, and the duct is partially discretized with the, for example, uh, first, obder, uh, first order upwind scheme to obtain an ODE. So we take our duct and for the sake of simplicity we discretize it with uh, five points, for example. And uh, the first order upwind give us that uh, DF over DT is minus C uh, f at uh, point j minus f at point j minus 1 over delta x, delta x be being the special discretization. Now, this ODE is used in Tx to transform the nonlinear eigenvalue problem into a linear eigenvalue problem written in state space formalism. So, recall the ODE. Uh, if we write it for point 2, for example, we have uh, this equation. If we write it for point 3, we have a very similar one, and so on, for all the different points. And we can rewrite it um, in, the, in the following matrix form, with the vector f2, f3, f4, f5. And we have just rewritten these four equations. Um, we, have, we obtain a, bl a block diagonal matrix with the c over delta x coefficients. And this term just comes from the fact that at point 1, uh, f1 is exactly f inlet. So it's just a way of rewriting uh, the first equation. Now, if we call, um, we can also write a, an equation for the, for the f outlet. And f outlet is simply f5. So if we call this vector x, we can say that f outlet is simply f5, so 0, 0, 0, 1 times the x vector plus 0 times the inlet. And you could uh, argue that is a bit peculiar writing it like that. It's just to make appear naturally the state space representation. So state space is, is just a framework to describe uh, uh, systems with two equations. The, the first one is the state equation, which relates how the state x is evolving in time as a function of its state and the input u. And the output y is related to the state x with the C matrix and to the, um, uh, to the input u with the throughput matrix D. 
And those two equations, um, the state space representation of those two equations is um, similar to a transfer function, for example. And in this case of a simple duct, what I want to highlight is that we have a matrix or we have matrices with constant coefficients uh, that do not depend on frequency. We have here C, which is the speed of sound, so a thermodynamic parameter that is um, fixed by the, by the problem. And we have delta X, which is our discretization. But all the matrices are independent of frequency. So we have a linear time invariant uh, um, system and we have therefore a linear uh, eigenvalue problem, which is much simpler to solve. And if you want all the details, you can find that in the paper uh, of Thomas Emmert in Acta Acoustica, United with Acoustica. Here, for the sake of simplicity, I uh, introduced the method with the first order upwind scheme. Obviously, you can consider different uh, discretization scheme. To summarize, here are a few key features of TAX. The first one is that we solve a linear eigenvalue problem, which means that we can use simple classical algorithm and we have a guarantee to find all the eigenvalues. This is particularly convenient in the context of studying eta modes, intrinsic thermoacoustic modes, because it has been shown by Menza or Bushman, for example, that those modes are difficult to find when solving for the nonlinear eigenvalue problem, as they are associated with a small bustine of attraction. Then we have the state space formalism of TX that allows for easy interconnection when building complex acoustic networks. So I showed you a minimal example with just a simple duct. But the uh, the idea is that you can build state space matrices for all these elements, the ducts, the area changes, the flame, and you can interconnect them easily w uh, by appending the matrices, which means that you obtain uh, um, state space representation of the whole system, which is still a linear time invariant system that is easy to solve. The state space formalism also allows for coupling with LNSC or LEEs. Uh, it has been shown by uh, Max Mindel, for example, uh, where he coupled a 3D uh, DG FEM solver uh, with TX. And we can also have an easy coupling with LES simulations through the CBSBC framework. Again, um, LES is used in the region of the flame where nonlinearities happen and we want high fidelity simulation to capture all the important physics. But in the region of the system where the acoustic is dominating, uh, it can be re replaced by a simple state space model of the of the acoustic uh, of the acoustics, thus reducing the computational costs. Finally, um, TX is uh, built with MATLAB and Simulink. In particular, to create the acoustic network models, uh, we have a graphical user interface in Simulink that is user friendly. What to expect in the following videos? Um, we will first have a look on uh, how to install TX and the first steps in, in, in the software. Then we will see how to create a TX model, run it and analyze the results and extract, for example, a few quantities of interest. Then we will have a video dedicated to good practices to set up models and typical error messages you will encounter and how to debug them. Then we will have a video dedicated to flame modeling in the context of state space networks. Then I will show you how you can extract acoustic properties from a model, for example, scattering matrices. Very important point, we will see how we can perform automated parameter study when you want to um, um, evaluate uh, the impact of a parameter change in your system. And finally, if you have a very uh, specific problem, I will show you how you can create new elements in the library.